Hello everyone, my name is Oliver and I'm an assistant psychologist from the Department of Psychological Medicine and I'm here today with a webinar on the topic of stress and anxiety. So by the end of this webinar you should hopefully have a, a deeper, greater understanding of what stress and anxiety is. So, so what is anxiety? So anxiety is a normal healthy reaction to danger or when in worrying situations. So anxiety, uh, for the most part, is a very normal emotion that uh, we all experience. But anxiety can also be a, a problem, and it's a very common problem. Um, in 2013, there were 8.2 million cases of anxiety disorder in the UK. And I would, uh, I would think that, in fact, that number uh, is greater than 8.2 million. We also know that moderate amounts of anxiety actually focuses us and makes us more alert. So anxiety in small to moderate amounts is actually good for us. It prepares us, um, you know, it, it focuses us and it makes us more alert. But, of course, anxiety can become a problem, and it's a problem when it interferes with our everyday lives. So let's talk about the threat system, uh, or the reptilian um, brain. So, when we encounter something that threatens our sense of survival, our threat system kicks in. And, of course, the, the bigger the threat, or at least bigger the perceived threat, um, the bigger the nervous system response. So the, the threat system, uh, also known as the fight or flight response, it's a uh, part of our um, autonomic nervous system and it evolved over many, many years because it was adaptive. So in other words, it, uh, it helped us to survive. And this is why virtually every single animal possesses a threat system. And that's why it's sometimes referred to as the reptilian brain, or at least um, the part of the brain responsible for the threat system is often referred to as the reptilian brain because it's so basic that, that reptiles have this. And um, I've already discussed uh, the reason for this is the fact that it was adaptive. It helped us to survive. So... What I mean by this is when we encounter a threat, so when, when, when we encounter something that's a danger, it would make evolutionary sense that we'd have a system that would become activated, thereby preparing us to either fight the threat or to run away from it, uh, flight. And that's why it's often also referred to as a fight or flight response. So if we think back so when we were you know, hunter-gatherers millions of years ago, if we were to encounter, uh, let's say, a lion or some other sort of predator, well, that's clearly a threat. Uh, you know, that lion can, can eat us and, and do some damage, right? So it would make sense that we'd have a system that would kick in to prepare us to fight the threat or run away from the threat. And this is essentially what anxiety is. The only difference is in our modern day lives, uh, you know, things like being late to work, things like money, things like relationships can now trigger that threat system and it makes us feel anxiety. And of course, some people might experience, um, you know, so much activation of the threat system so frequently that it does cause them uh, some problems. But of course, there are things uh, that we can do which will be discussed at the next webinar. So, what happens uh, to our bodies when the threat system is activated? Well, various hormones are released throughout the body, such as adrenaline, and these hormones prepare the body to fight or flight, to run away, or to fight the threat. So this is why you might notice some of these symptoms when you're feeling anxious. So for example, your, your heart might beat faster and harder. That's to get more 
uh, blood and oxygen uh, to your muscles, which of course you'll need uh, when running away or when fighting. Likewise, your muscles might become tense and they might tremble. Again, your muscles are, are tensing up, preparing to fight or run away. Your lungs might start breathing quicker or deeper, again trying to get more oxygen into your blood supply. Um, and you might notice various other things, such as um, you, you might notice a dry mouth, or you might notice that your pupils dilate. Essentially, all of these uh, physical changes occur uh, in order to prepare the body to run away from the threat or to fight the threat. And the body doesn't really distinguish between threats. Imagine you see a predator, you see a lion, or you see um, you know, a, a rabid dog or, or something, and your threat system becomes activated. And now imagine you've just had a, a really awful argument uh, with a friend, and your threat system becomes activated. They'll, they'll activate in, in very similar ways, even though the situation in, in, in many ways is, is very different. So let's just spend a moment thinking about how anxiety affects you. So just spend a moment to think about any emotions you might feel when you're anxious, any physical sensations, um, any, any particular thinking styles. So maybe you might start thinking in certain ways and try thinking about any behavioural patterns, so things that we do in response to anxiety. Now anxiety is a very universal experience. Virtually every single animal experiences anxiety. It's a part of being alive. However, uh, people, you know, do experience anxiety uh, differently, you know. Every person's experience of anxiety is unique. Uh, but there are some quite common thoughts, emotions and behaviours in anxiety. So, for example, some very common thoughts in anxiety are thoughts like, this is too much, I can't cope, it's unfair, I haven't got enough time. I can't do this. I must get this done. Very, very you know, negative, worst case scenario uh, type thoughts. And of course, these thoughts uh, just keep the worry going. They keep the anxiety going. They maintain it. And some other common emotions in anxiety include um, feeling irritable, short-tempered. Often when we're feeling quite anxious or stressed, uh, we can become quite quite blunt or quite curt with people. We might also feel agitated, uh, angry. It's not uncommon to get angry at the fact that we're feeling anxious. Um, we might even feel depressed that we're feeling anxious, or we might just feel so anxious that we feel exhausted, which leads us feeling depressed. Feeling hopeless as well, that's a, that's a very big emotion. Um, and this, this feeling links in with some of these thoughts. You know, saying I can't do this, I can't cope. It's a very hopeless um, thought and of course can lead you to feel uh, hopeless. Feeling overwhelmed as well. So feeling like we just can't handle everything. Feeling like everything's a bit too much at the moment, again, is a very common, common uh, emotion and anxiety. And then we have behaviours. So behaviours are, are th is anything that we do, something that we, that we do. So we might procrastinate or neglect our responsibilities. Um, what, whatever it is we need to do might be so anxiety-inducing or so stress-inducing that we just avoid it, that we just put it to one side. Um, and that links in with uh, avoiding the situation. You know, avoidance is a very, very common thing in anxiety. And it's understandable. If something makes you feel anxious, you're, you're going to avoid it. Uh, but what we know is that by avoiding 
the anxiety inducing situation, we can actually keep that anxiety going. Uh, other common behaviours include sleep problems, we might withdraw, so social withdrawal, we might isolate ourselves, uh, which again, you know, can keep the anxiety there, it keeps it going because, well, you know, isolating yourself is, 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 is never good for you really. Um, and unhealthy eating habits, and uh, likewise using alcohol uh, or nicotine, you know, cigarettes and other drugs, when we're feeling bad, when we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling anxious, um, it's not uncommon for us to self-medicate. Uh, so we might eat sugary foods or we might eat, uh, you know, a lot of takeaways because, you know, it makes us feel good. It makes us feel slightly better. Likewise, we might drink or do drugs or smoke uh, because, you know, these things make us feel better, at least in the short term. Uh, but of course, we know long term that these these coping strategies um, make things worse. And then lastly, we have some common physical sensations, which are the symptoms of the threat system that we discussed before. So things like uh, racing heart, uh, quicker, deeper breathing. So anxiety uh, can be thought of as almost like a bit of a vicious cycle. So if you look on the diagram on the screen in front of you, we can see these different uh, elements of anxiety. So you know, anxiety is made up of thoughts, it's made up of feelings, behaviours, physical symptoms. And all these different areas uh, interact and link to each other and they feed into each other and they can keep this cycle going. So let's say, for example, that we're having a, a really difficult day at work. It's been really stressful and uh, we have the thought, I won't be able to cope. Well, that thought might lead to us feeling tense or on edge. And then likewise, those thoughts might lead to us having those physical symptoms of anxiety, a racing heart, feeling dizzy or sweating. And then that might lead us to avoid things. So maybe we avoid work or maybe we avoid a particular person or a situation. But by avoiding, um, by avoiding, we end up reinforcing these thoughts. So thoughts like I won't be able to cope get even stronger, which of course makes those feelings and physical symptoms stronger, which in turn makes you more likely to avoid the situation, which, again, would make those thoughts even stronger. Okay, so we've reached the end of the webinar. Um, I hope you did uh, learn something useful. And uh, just before we do finish, I'd like to leave you with a goal. And that goal is to... Have a go at creating your own hot cross bun. So uh, the hot cross bun model is uh, the model that we just looked at with the thoughts, behaviours, physical sensations, emotions. And filling this out with your own example can be a really nice way of helping you to increase your awareness and understanding of anxiety. And uh, sometimes just having a, a better understanding of our anxiety can be quite helpful. Okay, so we've reached the end of the webinar. Uh, do take care, and I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Bye for now.